Master Shots is a new feature introduced with the R2S. Must admit that at first, as he missed it, expecting just a simple quick compilation of quick shots. But once I discover it, I can see several interesting ways to use them. And they're also great fun. In this video, I will show you how to make the most out of the master shots. As there are several things to pay attention to, I will try to prevent a couple of issues that many users have encountered. I will also show you how to avoid having the propellers in the shot and how to produce 4K files. So, Let's get going, and don't forget to hit the like button if you find it interesting. After selecting a target, with a single click the drone will perform a series of automatic moves around it for about 2 minutes. In order to generate a 20 second short movie of the surrounding with music. It looks like a simple tool to quickly produce uh, a short movie or your vacation to be posted on social media. But we also have access to the original footage and some of the moves are quite interesting, cinematic and not very easy to achieve manually. So it can be an interesting tool to generate quickly and without effort some very interesting footage and also to quickly scout an unknown location. After watching the footage back home uh, on the computer in front of a beer, we might decide to go back to the location for some extra move. This baby lacks lateral sensor, so it is important to choose a wide open location without obstacles, as it is hard to predict the movement of the aircraft during the two minute flights especially the first few times you use this mode. To enter the master shot mode, tap on the video photo icon above the shutter. The icon for master shot is right under the one for video. I will show all the different settings in a couple of minutes, but for the moment let me show something to be aware of. The first time I tried to shoot a master shot, after setting a target, I hit the shutter to start the process, but this message appeared on the screen. Flight route will reach maximum flight altitude, lower aircraft altitude or adjust settings. So I obviously try to modify all sorts of settings, the height of the drone and the maximum flight in DJI fly up, but I still kept receiving the same message. I did a search on the internet and I realized that plenty of other users had the same issues and apparently this happens when flying in a warning zone. And the place from where I was trying to take off is indeed at the edge of a huge warning zone. So I took my trusty bicycle, went a couple of miles farther, just outside the warning zone. And this time things worked out perfectly. Warning zones don't have to be confused with authorization or restricted areas. It is perfectly legal to fly within a warning zone, and in fact for normal video or photo the flight of the aircraft is allowed by the geofencing system, while in restricted or authorization areas the drone would not take off. This is probably a mistake in DJI Fly App that I hope will be soon fixed by upcoming software upgrades. In the area where I live and in most areas in Europe, there are warning zones everywhere. So, the possibility of using master shot are severely restricted. So, here I am in the new setting, just outside the warning zone, a little graveyard by a village in the foothills of Mount Etna. Quite interesting. I am a touch nervous because of a big pole just next to where I am. After hitting master shot in the photo video menu, we select our target by drawing a box around it. If people, vehicles or boats are detected, and the option target scanning is selected in the setting, there will be a plus sign above them and we can select them by simply clicking on the plus icon. Notice that if a moving object is selected, 
Master Shot will not track it and will quickly lose it. But that is understandable, as shooting these kind of shots with a moving target could be dangerous. Before getting into action, we go to the safety tab in the settings and make sure that the obstacle avoidance action is set either to bypass or to break. For obvious reasons, we don't want it to be on off. At the bottom of the screen, we have a rectangle showing an estimated flight time of 2 minutes and a selection for three parameters width, length, and height. In the bottom right part of the screen, we can choose the resolution of the video files between 1080p, 2.7K and 4K. I have read on the internet several reports from users saying that 4K resolution is only available with iOS devices, but I am using an Android tablet and the selection for 4K resolution is available to me, maybe because I just downloaded the very latest version of DJI Fly app. I generally shoot in full manual mode and stay away from any auto exposure. But in the case of master shots, there will be plenty of moves that I cannot control, with the camera alternating between pointing down and up, and therefore with big changes in luminosity. So in this case, auto exposure can actually be useful. I noticed that we can control the overall exposure value, and this is excellent, as very often the auto settings tend to overexpose. I prefer to lower the EV settings and to protect the highlights, and then I can eventually lift the shadows in post-processing. After setting up the parameters, we can hit the shutter and get going. For a few seconds, the aircraft will orbit around the target in both directions, making some calculations, with a message adjusting aircraft position. Then it will perform a drone by flying away while raising in altitude. Then a circle move. followed by a pitch up plus fly forward. Another circle, but this time at a closer distance. And another one at medium distance. After that, a rocket move, rising in altitude while maintaining the camera pointing at the target, followed by a forward move with the camera pointing down until the target is right below the aircraft. Then it circles around the target, still with a top-down view. After that, the camera points straight up while the drone descends. before pointing the camera straight down again, circling while descending for a famous screwdriver Hollywood move. Just before the end of the master shot, it performs a very interesting crane move, descending and keeping the camera on the target while going back to the starting position. As you can see, during the two minutes, the drone has performed all sorts of interesting moves around our target. I can imagine that I will be able to have an excellent overview of a location unknown to me and extract several very interesting clips quickly and with very little effort. I shot three master shots in this location. Let's see the results. The files containing the entire footage shot are nicely stored on the SD card, and I can upload them to my computer. The first one was done without any setting, I just selected the target and pulled the trigger. The resulting file is in 1080 resolution, not really what I want, 
But apart from that, the moods are really interesting. The color and contrast are not bad. But after 30 seconds, tragedy. We can clearly see in the shot not only a propeller, but also part of the wing. There have been plenty of reports on the web about propellers showing up in master shots, but it is very easy to prevent this from happening. If we go in the settings for camera, we notice that they are different from the ones we get in other video modes, as they are contest sensitive. In other words, they apply only to master shots. There is a choice, shooting priority, which is by default set to obstacle avoidance. When in obstacle avoidance, the aircraft will prioritize safety. When circling, the gimbal will rotate the camera to the side as much as possible to avoid a sideways movement of the drone so that the obstacle sensor works better. The trade-off is that this might occasionally bring the props into the shot. Although in our clip it only happens once for a split second and can very easily be cropped away. So it could be a good idea to go for safety. If we choose composition, the gimbal will behave normally and there won't be any hint of propellers in the shot, but only use it when there are no dangerous obstacles in the surroundings. For this second clip, I had chosen the option composition and there are no props in the footage. I had also set the resolution to 4K and if you have a nice big screen, you can appreciate the amount of detail much better now. For this third clip still in 4K, I have set the auto exposure to minus 0.7 stops, as there is generally a tendency to overexpose. In the icons at the bottom of the screen, I have modified the height value from medium to large. The drone is now circling at a higher altitude and after a very quick color correction, the footage looks really nice. The entire footage for the auto-generated short movie is stored on the internal memory of the drone, so it is available on the album on DJI Fly App, in the aircraft tag. It's about 2 minutes long. It is possible to download it. By clicking on the star icon on the lower right, it can then be edited using several pre-made templates. Music can be added with the choice of several tracks. Make sure you have enough free storage on your mobile device and then by clicking on the icon on the top right, it is possible to render it. After rendering, the final masterpiece is about 20 seconds long and will be available in 1080p resolution ready to share in social media if you should feel the urge. Click on this link to watch my in-depth videos on all the different aspects of the excellent DJI R2S, as well as comparison with other models of the current Mavic line. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this video. See you soon.